this morning, the art of relaxation. This is a very important subject, and uh, it really is the art of ridding yourself of tension. That's the point. Tension has become, oh, I read it in the paper and I hear it on the radio, and, and uh, that seems to be the subject. But very few really know how to get rid of it. And the art of relaxation is knowing first what tension is and then being rid of it. Because, because tension is, at the, is the basis of all our trouble. Tension means that within us there is a turmoil going on due to the lack of control of the consciousness and cosmic energy within us. That's all it is. That and the fact that when we think we are relaxed, if you will observe carefully within yourself, you are not relaxed at all. It's like trying to fill a bottle full when you've got it half full to start with. There's life force left within you that is not controlled. And that is what causes fatigue. Remember that now. If you're tired, what is the reason? That within your muscles and tissues, there is a lot of stagnant life force that should be gotten out and fill the bottle up with new clean life force. That is a very important point. Remember, fatigue isn't many times what you think it is. It is a fact that life force, residual life force, remains within your tissues, and that is what causes you fatigue, to be fatigued. So the definition of relaxation is, according to this dictionary, to make more lack to loosen, to slacken. But scientifically, it is, as I have pointed out, recalling the attention or controlling the life force and consciousness at will. You can, if you practice Self-Realization Fellowship Yoga, be able to loosen the attachment on you of this life force which keeps you jittery and moving all around, not only in body but in mind. And it keeps the soul clouded by the movement going on there. You'll be able to, at will, be calm and relaxed. But it takes practice. Consciousness and life force are the key points in all things. In all of your activity, you perform it by the consciousness in you plus the life force. Of course, sometimes it becomes automatic, but nevertheless, nevertheless, it was the conscious application of life force that formed a habit. And remember those two things. Consciousness and life force are at the basis of all activity, and also the control of consciousness and life force is at the basis of all relaxation. It's a very important thing. If you put your hand on your muscle, those of you who know it, you can by will send the consciousness and energy there. That's the key to all relaxation. You can, by control of consciousness and the life force, remove the life force from that part or any part of your body that is half filled up with life force and is in the state of fatigue. It's a very important subject and point, that's why I'm dwelling on it for just a little. Now you sit upright, and you close your eyes. Now you feel relaxed, don't you? But you are not relaxed. The stagnant life force within you, unless you're an advanced student and know self-realization yoga and know what to do. But you can, by the teachings of self-realization fellowship, remove that stagnant life force and then fill it with fresh cosmic energy of God and his consciousness. That's what you can do. Now you're sitting there, you feel relaxed. But you observe closely within yourself. Don't you feel attention still there? That's what causes fatigue. That one thing. Now, 
By the techniques of self-realization fellowship, you can control the life force and remove that. There are simple techniques which I will not go into it except to say it can be done. But one thing I will point out, as you sit there now, you lift your consciousness to the Christ center. You lift it now fully as much as you can concentrate there. Let go everything and you'll feel the life force leave the tissues of your body. If you can do it with strength and with will. It can be done after you're used to it at will so that you will never feel that fatigue within you. Of course, sometimes it cannot be done right off. It takes practice. But it can be done. Why? Why? Because when you put your attention at this point, where does the life force go? I mean, when you put it there, having removed the obstructions and the attachment of your attention to the body, why does it, why does the tension leave you? Because as you look at this point, you contact the great attractive force of God himself, his love. And what happens? It pulls the life force back into your spine and up to the supreme lotus in the brain, and you are thoroughly relaxed. Now that's something which can be attained and can be practiced, and can be accomplished, and can be done by will. But you have to go step by step. Unless you have been going step by step, and have attained control, consciousness and energy, you cannot do it. But you can feel, if you concentrate right this minute, enough, and feel and think of God enough as the source of all consciousness and energy, you will feel it leave the tissues of your body, and you'll feel the peace of his presence showing you that the life force has retired to the spine and is going upward toward God in the cranium or in the supreme center of the brain. That's a point, please do not forget, that if you want to be rid of tension, first learn how to control the consciousness and energy of God in you. That's his presence, nothing else, the presence of God is the consciousness and energy made dynamic to your being. When that Brother Lawrence practiced the presence of God, he made divine consciousness, divine to dynamic to himself. And he felt, he felt instead of his body with all the life force scattered all through it, he withdrew it to the spine and the supreme center of the brain and he felt the presence of God. That can be done by the practice of yoga, especially self-realization fellowship yoga. And one wonderful thing is, if you can control one, if you can control the life force, the energy, the consciousness travels right along with it. Isn't that a wonderful thing? So if you can put your consciousness at this point, with determination and will, the life force will run right back to the spine and up to God. They both go together. They are never separated, no more than you can separate the fire and the burning power. You cannot do it. Can you? You cannot. So, can you separate God? Of course, his manifestations are many. Look at those beautiful poinsettias. But they came from the consciousness of God, plus the burning power or his energy. So it is within us. Consciousness and energy. Go together. That's the key to the practice of yoga. Control the life force in the body and your consciousness, instead of being trapped in outward things and in this bodily vehicle, returns home to God where it belongs. Self-realization yoga is very important, very wonderful. And so, many people are filled with tension because of worries and frustrations and such things. Why? The balance is too much on the duality side of existence and not enough on the spiritual side. We live too much in worldly consciousness. We must live more actively associated and in contact with God's consciousness and energy within. That's our divine nature. Just that little difference makes you either a human being or a divine being. Now, which do you want? You can only want one thing if you are at all sensible, and that is to consciously know God, his presence within you as his consciousness, plus his life force or energy. 
Now, to be able to do what I have just pointed out to you, that is to lift your consciousness and, at this point, and with such determination and will, it requires what? Concentration. It requires concentration, that's all. Yoga gives you that power. Self-realization fellowship yoga gives you the power to force more life force into your muscles and tissue or withdraw it. Release the attachment, so to speak. That's the whole thing. And this applies especially to mind, which I will come to in a moment, into the mental aspect of yourself. What is the trouble there? When your mind is restless, you have not controlled the life force and energy. And it's stagnant, and underneath is going a little jitteriness all the time, keeping you in misery. That's why I must emphasize so much, the lake of the mind must be still. The lake of the mind must be still. None of this oscillation, which makes us run around subject to its rule and the dictates of your mind. That isn't what we should do. We should be able at will to look at this point and still the waves of the mind and be one with the infinite presence of God expanded all over. It can be done. It can be done. If you want freedom from tension, learn to do that. Learn to do that which is your birthright, to know instantly the stillness of God's presence and not be bound by this little bodily vehicle. And that's what the definition says, recalling the attention. That is, it's all out through our body, through everything, and we think we are this body. But when we are able to loosen the attachment, recall it to the spine and brain where God dwells, then we'll know. As long as, as Lord Shankara says, I am he, I am he, blessed spirit, I am he. That's why in our prayer we always say, I'm not this body. We say it over and over and over again. Why? Because we still think we are, that's all. And gradually it'll permeate through our consciousness and we make the effort. Then we will know that instead of being this body, we are the infinite presence of God within. That's the art of relaxation. Releasing the attachment of consciousness which makes us seem to be this body and then applying it where we want to apply it on the presence of God within. Concentration is a very important thing. <coughs> and so, to do what I have pointed out <coughs> means we must develop <coughs> concentration. And by the developing of concentration, we can free our attention from not only the body, but from the mind, and finally from the deep organic processes within our body which tie us so securely that we think we die. These are facts. These are important facts. When you have <clears throat> loosened the attachment of attention to your body, and then from the mind, and then finally so deep do you concentrate that you loosen it from the organic aspect of your body, deep within, then you'll be without breath or the internal functions. You'll be then fully alive. That's real relaxation. That's what we can do by simply following those, the great sages who attained that relaxation. And especially our master, who was an adept at it, not only at that, but was one with God. So we have a wonderful teacher. Let us not forget that. <clears throat> and also, one other thing. Not only will we be able to free our attention from the body, but from the mind, which is so terrible at times, keeping us attached, taking away our freedom and our peace. And lastly, we can remove that consciousness which makes us feel that we are this body and keep, keeps us in ignorance as to what we truly are. That is what we must do. And to know that is the art of relaxation. I have a reference at this time <clears throat> from our master, which I will give you, pointing out that the recharging exercises of our work, the relaxing exercises, will help you to free the body 
from tension. The other exercises of our work, which I will not take the time to tell you about, will help you to release tension from your mind. And the final techniques, especially Raja Yoga, will help you to once and for all free your attachment to this body. And then you can say with Lord Shankar, I am he, I am he, blessed spirit, I am he. So follow, if you wish to be free from tension and fully relax to the presence of God, follow, follow the teachings of self-realization fellowship. They come from ancient times. Yoga is age old. But if you follow it, then you will know. Do not take my word for it or anybody's word for it. Follow, practice, then you will know. But that you will know, I can assure you, and there are many in this room who can assure you. Now, <clears throat> kinds of relaxation, just briefly. There are many kinds of relaxation. You come and flop in a chair, and you say, oh my, oh. You are not relaxed. Within you is that tension I spoke of. Now there are two, many kinds of relaxation. First is physical relaxation, two kinds. Incomplete and complete. Incomplete is what? Well, I just spoke of it. Flinging yourself down in a chair and feeling, feeling at least better than when you were running around full of tension. But there is still tension there. Sleep is another way of partial physical relaxation. And fully, full physical relaxation is attained through the techniques of self-realization fellowship, where you withdraw the energy consciously from the body parts, all the body parts, and then you are fully relaxed physically. Now, there is mental relaxation. You have also there the two factors, partial and, and complete. Partial and complete. Mental relaxation partial is sleep. That's an automatic state. But are you fully relaxed in sleep? If I stick a pin in you or even just touch you, you'll wake up. You're not fully relaxed. But... By the practices of self-realization, you can attain conscious relaxation of your mind so that there is no movement in it. Conscious relaxation, not automatic as in sleep, but you can consciously withdraw the energy so the mind is still. And that relaxation is far greater, far more important to you than sleep. Because you fully relax the mind, fully withdraw the consciousness and energy. Not partially, fully. So those of you who are troubled with insomnia, if you can't seem to get that sleep to come, if you will just do this particular exercise and consciously control the life force, you'll be more refreshed in the morning than as if you had what you call a good sleep. So, Relaxation is very important, especially of the mind. Then we come to the third, the third type of relaxation, which is called metaphysical relaxation, because it takes in relaxation of the deep organic parts of our body, the heart, the circulation, the lungs, and such things. Those can be relaxed. How can you feel good if you're going around puffing away <laughs> all the time and your heart's pounding away all the time? No wonder you feel tired. There's a lot of life force left within your heart and your lungs. But by the practices of yoga, especially Raja Yoga, you can withdraw the deep energies within you that control your vital processes, giving them a rest, giving them a rest so that they can heal if they're worn out or becoming worn out, so at least they can rest. So metaphysical relaxation is very important. It is the deep, deepest relaxation, and it is attained by Raja Yoga, especially the part of Self-Realization Fellowship known as Kriya Yoga. 
Kriya Yoga relaxes you deeply, deeply within. It is called conscious, sensory, motor, organic relaxation. That's too much for you to remember. Remember, it is called conscious death. Now, you won't die in the ordinary sense. You'll be more awake than you ever were. Why? Because you have withdrawn the consciousness and energy, not only from the body, the muscles and bones and so forth, but from the deep internal organs, allowing you to rest and allowing you to place that consciousness in the spine and up in the supreme brain where God and his angels dwell. That's the complete relaxation. That's the final relaxation until you do die, but die for heaven's sakes consciously, not be pushed into death, but die conscious of the process of death. You can do it right in this life. Why wait until we're thrown out into death and then in an unconscious way? We are children of God made in his image. Why not learn to die consciously? There's nothing to be afraid. How can God die? How can you die being a part of him? being his children. You cannot die. You're afraid of it, that's all. Let's not be afraid any longer. Let's practice these great techniques which help us to remove the life force and consciousness from our body, giving us conscious contact with God, giving us conscious realization that we can never die, that we are divine in nature. These things are possible. Don't say those are things that are imaginary. They are not. They are, conscious, they are possible and can be accomplished by will. <clears throat> now, at this time, I'll say just a word about mental relaxation. Mental relaxation is very important because I think in these times it is that tension which people feel. If they could just get rid of that tension. If they could just still the waves of the mind and have, as some say, if I could just have one moment's peace. Well, that's a fact. Because their mind is restless. Mind is nothing but the operation of consciousness and energy in a certain definite way. Your mind is nothing but the action of your own consciousness plus the energy within you. As the faculty called mind. Now, if you can control it, you will have peace. If you cannot, you'll have misery. So the mental detachment, as I have called it, is very important. And I know you all will agree with me on that one particular point. Mental detachment is absolutely necessary. With the mind restless, confusion there, you cannot have peace. But it is possible. By following the techniques which I have spoken about just briefly, it is possible at will. When you are mentally like that and restless and wish you were some other place than where you are, you can lift your consciousness to the Christ center and at will be one with the infinite presence of God as peace and bliss. There'll be no mental restlessness. It cannot be there. There'll be no tension. Now, if tension bothers you enough to want to be rid of it, do these things and you will prove this to yourself. Mental detachment is the thing we must understand. Mental detachment. And that comes, of course, from nagging worries, consciousness of duty, and a million things. Why? Because you do not control your mind, that's all. You do not control the life force and consciousness that's operating. And all these things come in upon us. I don't need to enumerate them. You know them. There are a million things. The mind with all its memories of ages, not only ages, lives and lives. As our master has said, the thoughts of all men, past, present, and future are there. What a job we've got to control this mind. But it can be done easily. If you break the dream of God, he is dreaming this thing and our mind is a part of it. If you break the dream of God, really break it like you break your own when you wake up in the morning, There'll be no dream. Only God's consciousness, his great peace, his bliss, freedom from all tension. These are facts that are worth working for. 
And I will give you a reference at this time from our master's autobiography of a yogi. A wonderful reference. I want you to listen carefully. Yoga is a method <clears throat> of restraining the natural turbulence of the thoughts. All men are born in delusion. All men walk the earth wholly deluded. Think of what the scriptures say. What chance have we? But in the next line it says, O oh, Arjuna, get out of my delusion. We can get out of it. Yoga is a method for restraining the natural turbulence of thoughts, which otherwise impartially prevents all men of all lands from glimpsing their true nature. The goal of yoga science is to calm the mind that without distortion it may hear the infallible counsel of the inner voice. You see what an important thing it is to relax the mind. You now, as you're sitting here, feel very peaceful. Why not take it with you in everything you do? You can do it. It takes a little practice, but if you start and then give up at the first obstruction, naturally you won't attain. Make up your mind. I am sick of this business of being separated from God. I want to know I am one with God every moment and carry it through. And so these things are very important. <clears throat> and finally, the highest form, as I have said, of relaxation is metaphysical aspect, wherein you loosen your attachment to this bodily vehicle which causes, causes so much trouble, and to your mind which you cannot control most of the time, and finally you release your soul <coughs> from bondage <coughs> to freedom which it, which it is entitled to, freedom of God's presence. That's the greatest thing. And with that, what happens? With that comes. The realization that you were never apart from God, you only thought you were. And you realize that you are not apart from him, not separated. And in that, you will find fulfillment of all things you could ever think of or want or desire. Everybody is there because there's only one God in his consciousness. All your relatives are there. But this delusion makes you think that they are not there. They're there and there and there and there. They're in the presence of God. There's only one consciousness. But you have to break the dream to realize it. Metaphysical relaxation will help you break the dream that you are apart from God. And it will help you realize on the positive side that you never were apart from him. He is and you are. There's only one God and consciousness. And that's your birthright, that's my birthright. If we will but really want it and do something about it. I'd like to give you another master's reference here. References here. Listen carefully. When the walls of a reservoir are destroyed, the master said in his little book, master said, the waters rush out in all directions. Similarly, when the limitations of restlessness and delusion are removed by meditation, the consciousness of man spreads out to infinity and merges in the omnipresence of spirit. How wonderful. Just by a little control of consciousness and energy of which I have been speaking. Just by fully relaxing yourself from attachment to this vehicle which separates you from God, as our Master says, then by meditation the consciousness of man spreads out to infinity and merges in the omnipresence of spirit. Blessed Spirit, help me to subdue the incessant ripples of the little wave of my life, that thine oceanic vastness spread over me. And in that state, when you break the cosmic dream, as Master says, 
you'll realize gone forever are the fitful flickerings of mortal memory. Think of it. Spotless is my mental sky. Beneath and front and high above, eternity and I, one united ray, a little bubble of ego has become the sea of bliss itself. <laughs>